before uh, we begin, I just want to say that I am so honored uh, to swear Michael Hauser in. Uh, he just told me, don't say some things. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, since he's been born, I've been around. And, uh, and just to see his hard work, his determination, his love for people, love for the community, love for God, uh, love for his mom, Amen. It's, it's just a blessing. And it's a blessing to see him um, rise to this level. And I know that it's much more for him to come in the future. And so I'm going to let Mama Marshall hold this Bible. And if you can please raise your right hand. I, and state your name. Michael Hauser. Mm -hmm. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. Uphold. Uphold. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter and Laws. And the Charter and Laws. Of the County of Cuyahoga, Ohio. Of the County of Cuyahoga, Ohio. That I will faithfully that I will faithfully, honestly, honestly, diligently, diligently, and impartially, and impartially, perform and discharge, perform and discharge, all of the powers and duties, all of the powers and duties, incumbent upon me, incumbent upon me, as a member of Cuyahoga County Council, of a member, as a member of Cuyahoga County Council, in and for, in and for, the county of Cuyahoga, the county of Cuyahoga, state of Ohio, state of Ohio, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my abilities, and understanding, and understanding, so help me God, so help me God, congratulations. <laughs> Have a group. At least the best looking. Twenty third, two thousand eighteen. Um, we um, have a new council member. Congratulations, Michael Hauser, and uh, the the. The um, new member would like to make some comments. Yeah, just real quick, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, I want to thank my mother, who's my biggest supporter. I think I still owe her money for the first campaign. Um, all my family and friends for coming out today. I see my Aunt Kit, my uh, cousin Andre. Thank you so much to Alyssa for uh, allowing me to always be me. Uh, I see Mayor Eddie Krause from Solon. Uh, we can clap it up for him. Congratulations, Eddie. Uh, all, all the directors I've worked with over the years, I, I promise you, I will not uh, give you a break. I'm going to be on you like everybody else. Uh, Armin and Sharon, thank you so much for the opportunity. All my new colleagues, I look forward to working with you. Um, I don't think I, I missed anyone, but uh, I appreciate the support. Uh, my pastor's here. Uh, Pastor uh, Stand Up, uh, Robin Hasman for Bethany Christian Church. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, Judge Mays, thank you for, for swearing me in, and everyone, thank you for being here today. And Laura Roach, and the best, the best assistant, uh, she had my back the past three years uh, working on the executive side, and I thank you for all the support. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, under item number two, we do want to acknowledge that the council has received certificate, uh, the certificate from the uh, County Democratic Party to be found on page 10, and no action is required by council. Um, the, uh, clerk, would you please call the roll? Calling the roll, Ms. Conwell? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Hauser? Here. Ms. Simon? Here. Ms. Baker? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Tuma? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Here. And Council President Brady? Here. You have a quorum. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, 
under silent meditation, we're going to take a moment to remember uh, uh, Valeria uh, Harper, who passed uh, last week. Uh, we all had gotten to know very well, and uh, we're going to miss her uh, a great deal. Thank you very much. Are there any public comments related to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Reverend Pinkney Butts. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right, a little dry, but good evening anyway. And congratulations again, Michael. And uh, Judge. Anita Laster Mays, who I love dearly, you are always doing a great work and supporting people, and that's awesome to see you do that. Uh, I'm Reverend Pamela M. Pinckney Butts. I'm a pastor. I have multiple churches, and I'm a community activist as well as, well as other things. And I just wanted to uh, come this evening. And I, I always speak to those who are watching because the Word of God says in Romans, the first chapter, verses 18 through 20, that they are without excuse. So anyone who breaks the laws and is not here to participate in the making of the laws and to express your voice, you have no excuse. And it's available in books in the library. It's available on paper, although we're going paperless in many ways, and it's available on computer. So when you leave and when you turn off your device that you're watching this on, you are without excuse. I don't have time to cover all the resolutions that I'm concerned about, but if I were to pick one, I would pick the one that you discussed on yesterday where you were talking about spending $2 million in the Cleveland um, Athletic Club and the hotel process. And I stated on yesterday that I'm very concerned it is in your resolu resolutions, and I also have all my other resolutions on your records for my concerns. And I'm concerned because that money... I'm wondering how, first of all, the Bible says that we'll be the lender and not the borrower. So when you want to take a loan out and you're putting money into sports and hotels and people don't have a place to live, people, women can't do our hair, men and women can't provide for their children on a, just a regular day-to-day -day basis, some priorities are misconstrued. When you're talking about putting $2 million into sports and hotels, which has a twofold purpose and saying to it, hotel, you're saying that that is a priority versus meeting the daily needs. You have potholes. You have many other things that need to be addressed, and you need to go back to the drawing board. I see you're addressing the uh, Mr. Grimes' initiative, the fatherhood initiative, but I don't see enough money going into women and children. I understand that no one wants to pay for a deaf interpreter to come to the meetings, but millions and billions of dollars are spent to murder and disable, disable people already. So if you have two million dollars to spend, go back to the drawing board. I am currently a victim of domestic violence, and you have $2 million put into something like that. Thank you very much. Is there any other public comments related to the agenda? No, sir. Thank you. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 9, 2018, and uh, the Committee of the Whole and uh, the regular meeting? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Minutes have been approved. Um, is there a message from the county executive? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight we're asking council to uh, put on the May 8th ballot uh, a renewal of the 3.9 million uh, mil uh, health and human services levy. Uh, this uh, uh, levy is expected to generate about $104 million a year. The proposed renewal uh, will be uh, for a two-year period. 
uh, with collections beginning January of 2019. Uh, the two years allows us then to uh, get on a uh, four-year schedule with future levies. Uh, this is the smaller of two voted levies in Cuyahoga County to fund critical health and human service programs that uh, aid citizens in need. The two levies combined, uh, we expect, will generate somewhere around $231 million. We must have this levy passed in order to ensure that our children are safe, that the elderly are supported in their homes, that health care is accessible, and that families in poverty are linked with programs that provide child care and nutritional support. The levy serves all of us. But the main beneficiaries of the levy funds are children, the elderly, and families in crisis. The distribution of levy funds in 2018 include $68.8 million for children and family services, $32.5 million for Metro, $39.4 million for the Adams Board, $21.1 million for Juvenile Court, $16.9 million for Senior and Adult Services, and $12.7 million for Early Childhood and Invest in Children. If this levy does not pass, we would have to cut $104 million from our budget starting in 2019. And that is simply unthinkable. So I ask for your support and ask for your help to get this passed in May. Thank you very much. Thank you. Legislation introduced by the executive, consideration of resolutions for first reading adoption under suspension of the rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. They moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. The rules have been suspended. Um, okay. Clerk, will you um, read the item into the record? Resolution number 2018-0016, extending the appointment of Interim Director of the Department of Health and Human Services, Walter Parfiowitz, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Move, been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Matthew Kelly has uh, been appointed, right? No, Matthew Kelly is here to discuss this if we need any questions answered. Right. Since we don't. Moving on to the next resolution, Mr. President. Resolution number 2018-0017, amending the 2018-2019 biennial operating budget for 2018 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations for appropriation transfers and for cash transfers. Move to adopt. Any discussion? Mr. President, my colleagues, this is the regular bi-monthly fiscal resolution. We directed comments to Budget and management, they're answered to our satisfaction. The questions and answers are on your desk. Some of the key items are $800,000 for the uh, consultant services for the uh, Justice Center uh, decisions that have to be made, $1,173,000 for youth workforce development, one hundred and five. dollars thousand dollars for temporary employees related to the ERP project, three million one hundred and nine thousand dollars for replacement of the roof at the Virgil E. Brown building, and also a number of routine cash transfers from the HHS levy for health and human services programs. I recommend passage under first reading suspension. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0018, approving a collective bargaining agreement between Cuyahoga County and Graphic Communications Conference of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Local 546M of District Council 3, representing approximately eight employees in the classification of printing machine operator at the county print shop for the period February 1, 2018 through January 31, 2021, directing that funds necessary to implement the collective bargaining agreement be budgeted and appropriated. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. This was discussed in executive session. 
Um, any discussion? Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Consideration of a resolution for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2018-0019, making an award on requisition number 41056 to Tarek Roofing Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $3,068,857 for the Virgil E. Brown Building Roof Replacement Project. And this will be referred to Public Works. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of the rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? I move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Um, we're, um, we are going to uh, take something, we're going to take this out of order. We're going to, um, resolution number 2018-0014. This is the resolution declaring the necessity of the Health and Human Service Levy. We take it out of order at this time so the clerk can finalize the resolution and serve it to the fiscal officer prior to the council's consideration of resolution 2018-0015 on page 7. Uh, clerk, would you please read the resolution? Resolution number 2018-0014, declaring the necessity of submitting to the electors of Cuyahoga County the question of a renewal levy of 3.9 mil health and human services levy for the purpose of supplementing general fund appropriations for health and human or social services for a period of two years outside the 10 mil limitation in accordance with the provision of section 5705.191 of the Ohio Revised Code and declaring the necessity that this resolution resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. We have a motion to adopt and a, and a second. May I clarify who was Yes, the you motion? need the names for the document, yes, right? Do. Uh, Councilwoman you. Conwell Conwell. made the motion and we'll say Councilman Shrine uh, made the second. Thank you. Let's have pretty unanimous there. Um, any other? <laughs> so um, uh, all those in favor uh, say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2017-0241, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing of Wallings Road from Broadview Road to the Broadview Heights East Corporation line in the city of Broadview Heights. Toll estimated project cost $2,060,000, finding that special assessments will neither be levied nor collected to pay for any part of the county's costs of said improvement. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, we met uh, in uh, Public Mer Works uh, Committee on uh, Wednesday, uh, January 17th, uh, and this is for District 4, and uh, of that $2,200,000 uh, coming uh, from the county, and I would ask my uh, colleagues to move forward with this so uh, we can get that work done on Wallings Road. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2017-0242, authorizing a contract with the Salvation Army in the amount not to exceed $537,741 for the PASS Rapid Rehousing Program for Single Adults in connection with fiscal year 2016 HUD Continuum of Care Homeless Assistance Grant Programs for the period October 1, 2017 through September 30, 2018. Uh, move to adopt. Second. Okay. And Mr. President, it, yes, Councilwoman. Very needed service to assist <coughs> males um, with rapid rehousing, and over 200 individuals were uh, housed last year. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2017-0243, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-16,077 with Youth Opportunities Unlimited for the Temporary Assistance to Needy Families Summer Youth Employment Program for the period May 1, 2016 through December 31, 2017 to extend the time period to December 31, 2018 to change the scope of services effective January 1, 2018 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed Eight million six hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred ninety-nine dollars. Move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Nothing to say on this. No side. comments. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. 
Resolution number 2017-0244, making awards on requisition number 40361 to various providers for various programs and services for the Cuyahoga County Fatherhood Initiative for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2018 to the providers in the amounts not to exceed and for the programs as printed on the agenda. Move to adopt. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Yes, 11 contracts were awarded out of 14 bids and amounts are similar to the contracts in 2017 and I ask my colleagues to support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0007, making an award on requisition number 40411 to project management consultants in the amount not to exceed $800,000 for owner's representative services in connection with the Justice Center Complex Project for the period February 1, 2018 through January 31, 2020. This resolution will be moved to the February 13th meeting for third reading adoption. I'll be with you in one second, Mr. President. I'm signing this uh, legislation from prior. Yes, thank you. All right, moving on to resolution number 2018-0008, authorizing a revenue generating utility agreement with City of East Cleveland for maintenance and repair of storm sewers, sanitary sewers, and water lines located in County Sewer District number 24. Yes. Moved to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, Mr. President, um, uh, the uh, members of Public Works uh, Administration came before the uh, Public Works Committee on uh, Wednesday, uh, January 17th, and uh, this was explained, this is a um, way of uh, allowing the county to help um, with uh, the, the um, uh, funding accounts, as far as the, the names of the accounts to help with the um, sewers, uh, fix the sewers in um, East Cleveland, because of the way the uh, sewers are set up out there, um, this mechanism would allow for uh, continued funding to help with the problems that they're having out there. Um, so we thoroughly discuss this and I would ask for uh, my colleagues um, uh, approval of this uh, resolution. I'd like to add my name as well. Please add uh, Councilman Hauser's name. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0009, authorizing revenue generating agreement with Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority in the amount not to exceed $1,334,000 for sanitary and storm sewer maintenance and other services at various facilities located in Cuyahoga County for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2024. Motion to adopt. Second. And, second. and Mr. President, um, uh, this was also before Public Works Committee on the 17th, and this is an agreement with the RTA. Um, uh, they entered into a contract with, the, or would like to enter into a contract with the county um, to allow the county to uh, t take care and maintain um, their um, uh, sewers and uh, curbs and things like that. And uh, I think overall, it's a it's a win-win situation. They were paying uh, s some other entity. And uh, this works out um, well for everybody involved. So I would ask my colleagues' uh, indulgence on moving this forward as well. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0011, authorizing an economic development fund place-based mixed-use loan in the amount not to exceed $2 million to CAC Project 2014 developer for the benefit of the Cleveland Athletic Club Reuse Project located at 1118 through 1148 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland. This item was pending committee recommendation, and it did receive that. Move to adopt and second. And moved and seconded, Councilman. Yeah, yes, Mr. President, thank you very much. Um, as I said in committee, this uh, has uh, some sadness in my heart because good friends of mine used to own the Cleveland uh, Athletic Club, the Munson family, but as a result of the Euclid project, uh, Euclid Avenue project, when it was uh, uh, 
lost as a result of uh, no activity. It eventually closed, and it's been closed since 2008, the Cleveland Athletic Club. Um, this project is a conversion of uh, the existing space, not into a sports facility or a hotel. It's being converted into a housing stock for people and families who want to live and move uh, to downtown Cleveland. This is the last site along the south side of Euclid Avenue between Public Square and Playhouse Square that has not been redeveloped. Uh, it will consist of uh, over 275 construction jobs uh, to go forward with this project. It will also have 50 jobs uh, of a permanent nature in uh, the lease property, uh, plus some additional jobs that will be going into the retail that will be on the ground floor. And uh, I would advocate uh, for my colleagues that they support this. Uh, thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Let's have it and add Councilwoman Conwell's name, please. And my name, too. And add Councilman Schron's name, please. And add Councilman Jones's name, please. And the resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0012, making an award on requisition number 38826 to University Hospitals, Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital in the amount not to exceed $2,400,000 for health care and management services at the Juvenile Court Detention Center for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Been moved and seconded. Mr. President, this uh, item was heard in uh, committee was thoroughly vetted. Uh, this is transfer of, uh, of the services that Metro was providing to uh, University Hospital Rainbow Babies Children Hospital. Uh, the committee was satisfied to move this forward under uh, suspension due to the time limitations. We've passed actually the date of start. I'd like to recognize Dr. Hertz, who will be running this. Uh, doctor, if you'd stand, please. I, I apologize. And you didn't have to be here, but I'm glad you are. He'll be handling the services over there for Rainbow. And as I stated in committee, uh, Mr. President, one, if th those of us in Cuyahoga County are so lucky to have such facility in Rainbow, and one need not go too far to find an angel on earth, they're all over there. Recommendation is passage. Favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0013, authorizing an agreement with Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities in the amount not to exceed $1,200,000 for individual options waiver eligibility verification services for reimbursement of Medicaid home and community-based services for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Move to adopt. <coughs> Been moved and seconded. Mr. President, this is 100% 100% from levy funds provides housing and services for children with developmental disabilities and transitional youth into the adult de developmental disability system. And I ask my colleagues for their support. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mm -hmm. And this one was. Um, the next item was taken out of order earlier, so no further action is required. So we'll move on to the next resolution. Resolution number 2018-0015, determining to proceed with submitting to the electors of Cuyahoga County to renew an existing 3.9 mil health and human services levy for the purpose of supplementing general fund appropriations for health and human or social services for a period of two years outside the 10 mil limitation in accordance with the provisions of section 5705.191 of the Ohio Revised Code and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Effective. And this is the uh, companion piece for the Health and Human Services levy, and we have the fiscal officer's certificate right here, dated today on behalf of the council. Uh, clerk, please read the item into the record. You did that motion to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, that would be Brady and Schron in this case. Um, any discussion? Mr. Oh, President. Councilman Miller. Mr. President, I would... Uh, join with the uh, county executive and uh, asking the voters of Cuyahoga County to support passage of this renewal levy with no increase in taxes. This uh, levy not only provides uh, critically important services for people in need, 
child safety, mental health, and, and health services, senior services, and other services, but also provides very important upstream services like early childhood education and workforce development and child abuse prevention. And for these reasons, I uh, strongly support the legislation and ask the voters of Cuyahoga County for their support in May. Thank you. And um, just to note that the just to note that the legislation is uh, unanimously co-sponsored by the entire county council. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Congratulations. We're on our way to doing some real business around here. Um, any miscellaneous committee reports, Mr. President? President, the uh, Finance and Budgeting Committee will meet at its regular time this coming Monday, January the 29th at 1 p.m. to hear one piece of legislation that was referred at the previous council meeting and also to get the quarterly update on the ERP project, which is very important and I would invite uh, all all members and all interested members of council to attend that meeting. Thank you. Councilman. <clears throat> Mr. President, um, Public Works will be meeting at its regular scheduled time uh, on the uh, 31st at uh, uh, 10 a.m. Um, so uh, appreciate uh, anybody who wants to attend that meeting as well. All right. Anybody else? Nobody? Looks like you're... you're uh, this calendar's not going to be quite as heavy this time, Councilman. <laughs> Councilman Tuma uh, has one of the heaviest uh, calendars in the in the council routinely in public works. We appreciate his efforts and the time that he has to put into that. We always stick somebody with that when they first get to council. Uh, it is hard work and it's important work. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> public comment unrelated to the agenda. Yes, there is some. The first speaker is Mr. Akshay Singh. Uh, thank you, uh, Council President and members of Council, um, Executive Budish. Um, I wanted to uh, kind of come back and, and thank you, Council President Brady and, and um, Councilman Miller and Councilwoman Conwell for um, the work of getting the uh, choir committee to also be uh, tackling public transportation. Uh, we know it's a, a really important uh, year with the first set of cuts announced um, on March 11th um, for frequency through, I believe, almost every one of um, your districts. Um, so that is a first round of cuts that is going to be about 20% of the damage um, from the MCO sales tax losses that RTA is going to be dealing with. Um, we are really excited to be able to, to get to discuss this with um, Chair Baker and, and Vice Chair Simon. Um, but we do know that this is uh, an extremely um, important time. Um, right now, the the... Fair hikes that are still approved by the board from RTA um, would be going into effect in August. That would take day passes up to six dollars. It would take a single trip up to two seventy five. Um, at this point, uh, RTA for in terms of share of income that riders put in uh, for transit, we have for a city that's between two hundred fifty thousand and seven hundred fifty thousand. We in Cleveland pay the highest uh, shares of our income into transit. Uh, more than any of our peers. Um, we know that the, the fare hikes are, are going to be um, really painful for a lot of riders who are going to face them. We know that a lot of riders are just going to have to choose not to use the bus um, to make certain trips. And so um, I'm just here to uh, also please um, ask you to check out the, the subcommittee recommendations that we had um, from the transportation, the regional transportation advisory subcommittee, and um, 
please uh, make sure that that something uh, for for fair relief is is being considered. And, and our group is is really encouraging folks to also check out um, specifically fees on Uber and Lyft. Um, this is something that was done in the city of Chicago. We would like to see how how the county could actually uh, use this as, as a way of providing fairly for, for riders across the county who use public transportation. Um, so thank you for your time. Mr. President. Thank you. Councilman Miller, yes. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, publicly thank Akshay Singh for distinguished service on the Transportation Advisory Subcommittee. He, he brought forward uh, ideas and information that, that nobody else had and, and, uh, and made, a, made a very special contribution to the committee for which I'm grateful. Thank All you. Right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you so for much. your contribution. The next speaker is Dan McCarthy. Hello, thank you um, very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and uh, fellow council members. Uh, my name is Dan McCarthy. Um, I'm a daily RTA rider, and uh, I've been riding 10 years uh, pretty much every day. Um, I'm a student at Cleveland State right now. I'm in law school, um, but I have a degree in public transportation planning um, from the Levin College. Um, I just want to kind of reiterate a lot of the points Akshay was saying. Um, at the public transportation subcommittee, I submitted to the clerk. Um, he referenced that there was a uh, basically a tax that Chicago passed on ride sharing. Um, their tax is about, uh, it's almost 60 cents uh, per ride and it's netting them almost $20 million a year and that they're putting that into their re transportation system. Um, I really wanna urge this body um, to maybe consider something similar. Um, it really, really would help enormously. RTA is gonna be losing $20 million. I know you're familiar with the MCO tax cuts because the county is also losing money, but I know the state is gonna come through on the one-time fix, but going forward, um, it's pretty cataclysmic uh, looking at RTA and the type of service we're looking at. Um, something I uh, I was working with job, developer, job developers this last year, and the single biggest barrier I saw to a lot of low-income people getting jobs was they'd have these interviews lined up, but then they couldn't get to work and a lot of times you know you'd have families with lots of kids and they'd have to go on to OWF instead of getting employment and I just wonder um, you know uh, what kind of what the logic of that is when if you could maybe make some initial investment on the front end we really could have I think the strongest tool to economic development really is getting people to work um, and we have in Ohio we're blessed with a system like RTA which is far more expansive than any other city um, and we really need to be looking forward to continuing invest it. I know it's not, I know RTA is its own special district and it's not the county necessarily, but it is a county sales tax that funds it. And I really urge, um, you know, our, you as public leaders to really um, look at public transportation as, as the necessity that it is. Um, I'm going to submit, this is the legislation. Um, I'll give it to the clerk. I think I'm allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> This is the legislation that um, Chicago has passed, um, just for reference. I had already submitted it at the subcommittee, but um, it's, it's an idea. Um, it's something that uh, just kind of on the back of envelope calculations could net something like three, four million dollars. That's not gonna plug the hole, but when we're looking at, um, it's really important that fares don't go up. Um, coming here in August. When the last fare increase has happened, I mean, every 10 cents you're talking about 1% ridership decrease. If you have service cuts and fare hikes happen at August, I mean, you're talking this could be really, really bad. Um, I really wanna see the one day passes get back down to $5 for a lot of people in our community, having that $5 bill, being able to get them around the county, um, getting that all day pass, it's a huge thing. Right now it's 550, and that's really hard on a lot of people because they'll have like a $10 bill, they'll have to go break it. That 50 cents, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about what people actually got in their pocket, that $5 bill is really important. So if the county could find, I think RTA told us about $2 million is what they would need to maybe bring that all day back down to $5. So I really, really would hope that um, before August, maybe some movement could be made on that and we could help out a lot of people. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And the final speaker is Ms. Liu. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm glad to be here because uh, 2018 brings up lots of new things for us. But of course, we have a new obstacle too. Um, homeless people and extreme low income people definitely feel the pain of lack of everything. However, um, 
for the shelter on pain, we're getting a new service provider. We really wish lots of harsh uh, treatment, mistreatment will be gone. In that case, people can focus on their housing, job searching. However, I already realized transportation is a big issue because lots of people right now in the shelter, they get a blame for being lazy not to go to work. But in fact, the, the problem here is none of the shelter service provider can actually offer bus pass for them to go to interviews, even just to interview, not going to daily work. In that case, they have to give up job interviews sometimes because there's no way for them to walk all the way to some place really is not um, nearby, I would say more than downtown. We have people, they actually walk all the way to west side or to east side to a certain area, but still, with this kind of weather condition, it's impossible. On the other hand, we had another public comment mentioned about domestic violence. Please uh, note this part. Domestic violence, safe houses, we only have very few in our county, and they have been full for three years. It's good that people nowadays are more aware of the importance of domestic violence to prevent and to deal with it. Uh, that I have to thank uh, Council Member Conwell again to address the issue every year. Even though homeless shelter, this is, last year was the first time we actually could see any paperwork to show that this is a formal event. However, same thing. If we cannot really improve other situations, don't worry about the economy to grow in this county. We actually will have more people losing jobs because they cannot go to work anymore. In that case, that can put them homeless too. That means homeless population will increase even more and faster. H however, our current homeless system really cannot handle the existing population already. Please be aware. Please help the domestic violence safe houses. If we can also get funding to increase that, that will really relieve the tr uh, pressure on family shelters and single adult shelters for general purpose too. Thank you. Thank you. That's, That's it. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if there's no further business before the council, this meeting is adjourned.